Hi everyone and welcome to our first Clay Play Read video demo. Um, today we're going to be making a bobblehead inspired by the different creatures that are featured in Claymates. Um, we're specifically going to make a pigafin inspired by the pigafin in the book. Um, to get started, you're going to need to break your clay into a couple different pieces. We're going to have an extra chunk just for decorating um, and other little features off to the side. And then we're going to start with two um, round spheres of clay to make pinch pots. You can refer to the pink section on your clay mat to see how to make the pinch pot. But we're going to start by rolling that clay into a ball. And then for the pinch pots, we're going to push our thumbs into the center and we're going to slowly pinch around the edges. You want to make sure your thumb doesn't go all the way through and you want to try and keep um, your pinches even so that the walls of your pinch pot um, are pretty similar all the way around. If your pinch pot gets too thin, it won't be strong enough to stand up on its own. Um, and so you want to be careful not to make it too thin and remember to keep it as even as possible. So once we're happy with our pinch pot, um, we can go ahead and smooth out any edges that are a little rough. Um, we're going to set one off to the side and then we're going to work on our next pinch pot. So one of these pinch pots will be used for the body of your animal and then the other one will be for the head of your animal or whatever creature you make um, your bobblehead into. So, got your second one underway using the same method. Um, and then you can go ahead and smooth out any little cracks and stuff you have. Um, if you, if your clay is dry, you can use a little bit of water to smooth out these cracks, but, um, you want to be careful with that because you don't want your clay to get too soggy. So I've got one for my head and one for my body. You can see where we're going with this. Um, whichever pinch pot you would like to be your body, you can, we'll work on that one first. I'm going to grab a piece of that extra clay and we're going to roll this extra clay into a big coil. So you can look at steps. Um, one and two on the coil pot section of the clay mat. And this is gonna be what the head of our animal or creature rests on. So um, you want it to be about the depth of your um, pinch pot head. So just keep that in mind when you're creating the top part uh, for your head to rest on. So. Once we're happy with our coil, we're going to scratch and attach that onto the body. Um, so we're going to need our water and our scratching tool for that. So we're going to scratch both on the pinch pot where it's connecting and we're going to scratch our coil. Add a little bit of water and put that on. Um, and then just to make it extra secure, I'd definitely go around and smooth that top piece onto your pinch pot. Great, so we can set that off to the side and we're gonna focus on our head for a little while. So, um, like I said, I'm gonna make my own pig event inspired by the book. Um, so I'm going to add two ears to start, um, and to make my ears, I'm going to make them into little pancakes. So smashing down a little ball of clay into sort of elephant type ears. So just some big floppy ears. I'll set that there and then I'll make another one. So you can either um, attach your pieces as you go or sort of lay it all out and then attach them at the end. Um, I think I might attach all mine at once. So I've got my ears. I'm going to add some eyes. So I'm going to make two little balls of clay. Um, little blueberry size ones. I'm going to smash them a little bit and then put one there.
And then I've got my elephant ears and I think to highlight the pig part, I'm going to make a little pig snout. So take a little extra clay here, maybe roll it. I'm gonna roll it into like a short coil and then smash it. So maybe like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and scratch and attach all those different features on. So scratching where the ears are gonna go. Do both of these at once. And then also remembering to scratch on the ears where they're gonna attach. You don't have to scratch the entire thing, but maybe just the part that they're attaching. So do that. That one, maybe smooth it on a little bit. And then scratching this one. Great, so those are attached pretty well. Um, I'm gonna do my eyes next, so scratching on my pinch pot where they're gonna go and then scratching the back of the eye shape. I've got my eyes, oops. And then I'm gonna scratch on my snout. Great, so I've got the basics of my head ready. Um, and I can grab my skewer to add a few other details, so. Um, I'm going to use my skewer to make little peoples on the eyeballs. And then I'm gonna make two little nostrils on my snout. Great, so I think the head of my pig offend is ready. Set that off to the side. Um, I could also add some other features on to the body of my pig a fin, maybe two little feet, um, and maybe a curly Q tail for um, the back of it. But um, we're gonna go ahead and set these off to the side and let them dry a little bit before painting. Don't put your head on, but you can imagine what it will look like when it's finished. Um, but we won't put them together until after they've been fired in the kiln, just so that we don't end up breaking anything since they're really fragile until after they've been fired. This is our pig fin, and I can't wait to see what you guys create. So after we've let our projects dry a little bit, we can start painting. And for painting, we're gonna need our underglazes in the containers we have red, yellow, and blue, um, our projects. And then I have a little yogurt cup filled with water just for rinsing my brushes. Um, it might also be helpful to work on top of a scrap piece of paper so you don't have to clean the mat afterwards, but you're also welcome to work directly on the mat. And then we've got, um, I've got a piece of scrap cardboard. It's just the back of a snack box um, that I'm gonna use to divvy out my paint on. But if you have a paint tray or anything like that, that would also work. Um, so for painting, we're gonna, um, just gonna pour a little bit of my paint or my underglaze onto the cardboard. Um, it's helpful to shake them up a little bit beforehand so, um, so it can get a little clumpy and thick. And for painting with the underglaze, we want to um, sort of dab the paint on or do short brush strokes so that we aren't mixing our underglaze with the clay body. Um, and that will help our colors be a lot thicker and um, more opaque and less see-through on the final product. So you can spend um, time painting. You can let the first coat dry and do a second coat, or you can um, layer different colors. If you wanna add polka dots or stripes or anything like that to your animals, you can go ahead and um, layer the underglazes on top of each other. So enjoy painting. Once you're finished with your bobblehead, you can go ahead and set it inside your plastic box. 
um, so it can be stored safely until it gets back to the clay studio for firing. Um, just be sure not to stack your two pieces since they're really fragile right now still. Snap the lid on and it's safely stored.